I think that's a big thing to pay attention to because historically risk has been very siloed. You've got industry's perspective, you've got the regulatory perspective, you've got the standards perspective, and I see now that those are all starting to converge. And I think you know you, you could be very excited about that or scared scared as hell. I'm a person I'm kind of excited about that because that means that we're all starting to speak the same language when it comes to risk. All right. Oh, I didn't even talk about mistake number one. So mistake number one, risk management uh, and design control processes are treated as separate things. And I'm not gonna keep beating that. I think we're, we've illustrated that time and time again today. And as I go through the next uh, uh, few minutes, I'll illustrate some ways to try to integrate those two things. Uh, number two, risk management is a checkbox activity. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can tell you uh, my first experience, I'll, I'll tell on myself, was back and uh, I started as a, a product development engineer back in the late 90s. And I, I remember uh, you know, being a kid with an engineering degree responsible for new product development for a lot of catheter, central venous catheters, airway devices. And it was fascinating you know, to get a cocktail napkin sketch literally from a doctor and get to go in a machine shop and machine parts and pieces and grab tubing and glue it together and rip it apart and test it and all that sort of thing. It was fascinating. And the whole design control stuff, you know, it just like for me, I'm, I'm a systems kind of thinker and it just kind of, I understood how to apply design controls. Like a lot of my peers were struggling with that, but for me, it was just like clear. And uh, I remember one day I had, I was preparing for a design, or one week I was preparing for a design review and I remembered, oh yeah, on our procedure, it requires that I do a risk analysis. And we were doing FMEA at the time. I'm like, oh crap, I haven't done that FMEA yet. So I went back to my desk and I spent the next couple of hours, because my design review was the following morning, but I went back to my desk and, and I got my Excel spreadsheet and I went through all, the, you know, all my hazards and all, and I created my FMEA and I was so proud, I got to check that box. But there was no value in that. And, and I think that that mistake that I made many years ago is still made often in industry today. And I don't think it's our intent. I think everybody, when, when we think about designing or manufacturing or whatever it is that we do with our medical devices, I think our intent is, is good-minded. I think it's risk-based, but sometimes our documentation, our records, uh, our activities don't always align with our intent. And, and sometimes our activities are simply checkbox activities. Oh crap, I gotta get that, that risk assessment done. I better hurry up and get that, put it in my file so, so that I can say that. Mistake number three, FMEA is being used as risk management. Again, we've, we've heard this now, I don't know, six times today, maybe this is the seventh, but, but it is true, I mean, maybe I should also you know, tell you a little bit about my perspective. I work almost exclusively with companies less than 50 people. Uh, <laughs> I would say 80, you know, and it, four to five people that I talk to easily are still using FMEA and only FMEA for their risk assessment activities uh, and risk management activities. They don't understand the whole context. If you use your, you know, hazards can happen if you use your product correctly. FMEA is only about failures. So just keep that in mind. Mistake number four, risk management is not a life cycle process. We already talked about this as well. At the end of my design and development project, I archive my risk management file and, and say, good luck. Uh, hopefully you've got some questions on your CAPA form and your complaint form and, and you're able to check those boxes that let's say you've addressed risk. So this is a big mistake. All right, so I'm gonna share a few ways that, that we can integrate this as we go through uh, throughout the, the entire product life cycle. But the first thing I wanna illustrate is risk management is iterative during the product development process. And uh, everybody know, does everybody know what the, when I say the wa design control waterfall diagram, does everybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, it shows it as this linear progression, right? And, and I remember the first time that I started to understand design controls, I was thinking about medical device product development as a linear thing, a linear process. Now, how many of your processes are, are linear? Oh, <laughs> Nobody's product development process is linear. I mean, there's a, it's iteration, and sometimes you go back a step and 
or maybe three, and then you try to you're you're trying to go generally forward in a in a, in a direction, but it's an iteration yeah. through that process. Well, think about risk as the same sort of thing. I mean, for me, if I'm if I'm diving into a new product development, a risk activity, I want to try to understand where my gotchas are as soon as possible, so that I can use my design control process to help me mitigate, design, test, prove, demonstrate, model, what what have you that I can, you know, my risk profile is, is to acceptable levels, whatever I determine that might be.